What's going on guys? It's like 5 p.m. and I'm about to head into the backcountry, which I'm stoked about. I'm also stoked for this. I've got a new bag. This is a bag by Shimoda. It does look like it might be the perfect solution for a travel photographer, so I'm, I'm excited. I've packed it all up with everything I need for these three days in the backcountry. It's about an 11 kilometer hike to where I'm going. Once we get there, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the bag. I'm gonna show you what I packed for this backcountry mission, and we're gonna take some pictures. I'm stoked for this. This is a location I've never been to before, so let's cruise. One of the really cool things about being back home is there's so many places I still haven't ever photographed. There's so many places I haven't even explored or haven't been. And the place I'm going today is one of those places. It's called Lake O'Hara. It is one of the most popular hikes in this area, but in the summer months, it's almost always booked. There's only like some huts, there's 30 campsites, and then there's a lodge that's like super expensive. And you can get up there on a day trip by catching a bus that goes, but even that bus reserves up like really, really far in advance. So I've never gone up here. But since it's the off season, there's space available at the hut. So I booked myself in for a couple nights at the hut. And based on the, the parking lot, I might have it all to myself. So it's an 11 kilometer walk. Should take me about two and a half, three hours. Let's move. Hey, bear. So it's gonna be hard to show you, but look at those scratches on the ground. That's actually from a bear. I haven't seen any really, really obvious scratches or obvious prints. So I'm guessing that it's pretty old, at least a couple days ago. Although that looks like bear poop right there. I think that's bear poop. So there's definitely bears around. So I've got to keep talking. Okay, I made it. This is Elizabeth Parker hut behind me. This is where I'm staying. This hut is the reason I didn't have to pack my tent up, but I did pack a ton of stuff up. So I'm gonna show you what I packed up. I'm also gonna show you a little bit about the bag. So most importantly, bear spray. There's a little pouch in the front of the Shimoda bag. It's perfect for bear spray. If the bear comes up the trail and pop that out and hit them if you really have to. I've never had to do that before. And I hope I never have to. There's also another little pouch here. Um, I got a carabiner in it, but you can put whatever you want in there, I guess. Let me throw this stuff out. I threw my jacket just on the top. It's my Eddie Bauer down jacket. I got my tripod on the front. As you can see, Shimoda has like these little clips that you can clip your tripod into, but I actually took the little pouch off the bottom of my low pro bag and attached it onto the bottom just because I like having this little almost shoe for the tripod to stick in. So I've stuck that in there, tripod out. Now the Shimoda bag is back loading, which is awesome. It loads at the back. Let's say the bag opens here and you have your tripod on the front. That means anytime you wanna get your camera out, you have to take your tripod off. But you can have your bag fully loaded if it's back loading and, uh, and still get your gear out if something happens. Like if there's a bear you wanna photograph or a bird or something like that, you don't have to unload everything to get at your gear. I'm gonna get into it later. Now first take off my sleeping bag, which I've attached onto the side. My sleeping bag is a minus seven sleeping bag, also Eddie Bauer. There's a toilet roll also stuffed into there. I'm gonna put this down for a second and start pulling stuff out from the top. There's three pouches across the top of the Shimoda bag. There's a front pouch, which is deep. It goes all the way down to the bottom. There's like actually two pouches within it, but I didn't put anything in it. There's a second pouch, which has a chocolate bar that I've half eaten and my meals. I have dehydrated meals. I brought four of them for the three days. Um, there's chicken gumbo, Kung Pao chicken, forever young mac and cheese, um, my kettle, to boil water, although they have pots here at uh, Elizabeth Parker Hut. Another meal, this is my fourth meal, Wild West chili and beans, because I'm up in the Wild West. And now this 
pouch actually reaches down into the gear. I've stuffed some clothing in there. I won't take the clothing out, but there's essentially two days worth of clothing in there. You've got this other pouch. This one's totally separate. So this pouch doesn't reach down into, you know, the camera gear department. Got my water bottle. Oh, I should mention in the kettle, I have some fun stuff, tablets. These tablets you drop in the water to like purify the water so you can just take water out of the stream. If you don't do that, you end up with beaver fever and you get the poops and nobody likes that. I've also got some like antiseptics and band-aids and stuff like that in there just in case. Now this pouch, as I mentioned, is awesome. I got my charger for my RP batteries. I don't have a USB charger for um, my R, so I'm just hoping the R batteries last long enough. I uh, set a cutlery, one, two, three protein bars, charging cable, head torch, matches, my GoPro and mini tripod, batteries for the head torch, Allen wrench and stuff like that. This is a power bank. My RP batteries are 1200 mega amp hours. That means this thing, which is 24,000 mega amp hours, can charge 20 of these batteries, which is awesome. It means I'll never run out of batteries up here. Um, in this pouch at the top, there's a smaller pouch where I have three uh, batteries for the R and three batteries for the RP. That's it for the inside. Let's get into the pouch, let's make room. As I mentioned, the bag kind of opens like this. It's like a door. And to be honest, it was really comfortable walking. I didn't have anything rubbing. I, I didn't feel any problems at all. So very cool. Inside the bag, it just looks like that. I'll cover up my underwear. But you can see I've got my 100 to 400, my R with a 16 to 35, my Roken on 14 millimeter, and I've got my 24 to 70, a couple filters and a filter holder. And that is everything. I packed on this hike. I'm gonna unload some of this stuff at the hut and I think I'm gonna go out and take a picture or two. This is Lake O'Hara behind me. It's still mostly frozen over. So I'm gonna wander around and see if I can find a composition where the ice is kind of broken open. I also learned that the shoes that I thought were waterproof aren't waterproof. I stepped into, yeah, a big puddle <laughs> as the snow is really deep and kind of melting so you can't walk across it. And my feet are soaked. Bit tough sledding in this snow, but hopefully it works out. Hopefully I find a composition here. I'm having two problems that you're definitely gonna be annoyed with. <laughs> the first problem is that I'm shooting too many reflections. The reflections in Canada have just been too good that I can't not shoot them. The second problem I'm having is the water's too clear. <laughs> and, and it's actually hurting some of these reflections. You almost see too much under the water. There's lots of um, trees, there's lots of rocks, there's lots of shale, and it's kind of, it's kind of distracting to the reflection. So I'm really having to work to make sure the reflection's going in the right spot of this foreground. Even though it's reflecting, you can see stuff under the water and you don't want it to kind of blend together. So I'm working on a composition with this big old peak and uh, it looks like it's gonna get a little bit more light, but it's fading quick, so I better take a picture. Okay, the photos are coming out okay. It's pretty boring light, to be honest. Amazing scene, challenging light. So, I, yeah, there's not much you can do when you don't get clouds in the sky, but still beautiful. I wanna talk quickly about being on a pro team with a brand, because it works different than I think you guys 
think it does. And there's a difference between being on a pro team and being sponsored. Being sponsored means a brand pays you to use their gear, talk about their gear, and basically almost be a shill. I'm not, a, I'm not sponsored by any brand. I am on the pro team of three-legged thing. And what that means is a pro team thing is almost like a, a partnership between you and a brand. It's when a brand goes, wow, we really like your work and we want to support you. So we'll give you new gear when we get new gear out for you to test and to use and to play with. In exchange, all we ask for is that you tell us about the gear and what we can do to improve that sort of thing. Canon has partnerships with uh, Canon Ambassadors who are on their pro team, but Canon will send them out new cameras when their new cameras are being developed so that they can test them, play with them, and see if they want to use them in the future. So pro team usually doesn't mean sponsored. They're, they're definitely separate. In fact, I've never ever been paid by three-legged thing despite me being on their pro team for a couple years now. Shimoda, this camera bag brand sh sent me an email a couple weeks ago saying, hey Brendan, we love your work. We'd love for you to be a part of our pro team. And I, I was like, whoa, whoa, like let's slow down a little bit. That's a little bit too serious too quick. That's like walking up to a girl in a mall and being like, I'm gonna be your boyfriend. No, you gotta go through the steps, you gotta date, you gotta test. You gotta see if everything works before you jump into a commitment like that. So I said to them, I'm not ready to jump in to something like that really quickly, though you seem lovely. But if you want, send me out one of your bags, I'll test it, I'll see how I like it. And if I like it, and if it feels like it's a brand I can get behind and that I want a partnership with, then we'll talk about the pro team a little bit later on. So that's exactly what happened. They sent out this bag, um, it is awesome. I have to say I'm very impressed with it. I've been talking constantly about the perfect camera bag and how it's almost impossible to find. This is really, 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 really close. Uh, there's a couple things that I wish were a little bit better. I wish the back pads were a little bit better, a little bit softer for the long hikes. They're good, but I wish they were a little bit better. I wish there was a little bit more space in the top. I wish it was a little bit bigger. And the other thing I always find with camera bags is I either find they're either too deep or not deep enough. They kind of fit in this middle. So this Shimoda bag is deep. In fact, it's very deep, but you can't put like a 70 to 200 across there. So you end up wasting all this space because the lenses when not put this way, they go in sideways and it only fills half the bag. So I wish camera bags were just a little bit wider out this way so you could, you know, stick a 100 to 400 or 70 to 200 in that way and have way more space in the bag. But other than that, I love it and uh, it seems like it's extremely high quality. It's definitely a premium bag. It's a little bit more expensive than most bags, but yeah, I'm loving it and I'm going to run it through its paces like I don't know, a month or two, and then eventually I'll get back to Shimoda and uh, let them know if I want to have a relationship with them. And uh, I'll let you guys know what happens with that. Um, I want to give away one of these bags to you guys. The way it's going to work is you can click on the link in the description of my video to uh, my website and sign up for my newsletter, or if you're already signed up for my newsletter, you don't have to do it again. And at the end of the month, I'm going to send out an email where I'm going to give away a bunch of stuff. I'm going to give away one of these bags. I'm going to give away um, probably the new leaf filter system and I, maybe something else as well. We'll see what happens, but there's going to be a giveaway at the end of the month. So um, yeah, head over, sign up to the newsletter. Now the light isn't looking great. Um, so I'm going to end this video. It's been, uh, it's been fun. My feet are freezing and I'm, uh, I'm ready for a couple days up here. There's going to be a couple videos from up here and I guess I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.